guys, it's Leah Mouse, and ever since I made my video about my paranormal experiences, I have been getting requests to do another video. There are a couple more paranormal experiences that I had. There's not enough oomph in them, and there's not enough material to do another paranormal experiences video. However, I do happen to have a little stockpile of unexplained occurrences that have happened to me in my life that you could either chalk up to psychic phenomena, paranormal experiences, or just unexplained phenomena in general. These things seem to have happened to me my entire life. They're still happening to me. Make of it what you will. I'm gonna be asking for your guys' opinion in the comments when we're done. I would love to know what you guys think. And before we get started, I would like to take this moment to please ask you to subscribe to my channel if you are not already. Now let me just start off this video by saying um, my mom's side of the family has a history of psychic phenomena, uh, ESP experiences. Um, I'm not the only person uh, on my mom's side of the family who has experienced these things. Uh, my mom has had her own slew of experiences that are very similar to mine. And my mom's brother actually wrote a series of books. If any of you have ever heard of the Tarot in 10 Minutes books, that's my uncle. So without sounding too goofy or corny, there seems to be a link in my family, on my mom's side, to the psychic universe. So I know all of us have experienced deja vu at some point or another, and it's usually just a fleeting thing, very mild. Deja vu is so common for me. It's been happening my entire life, all the time. I have had up to quadruple, quintuple deja vus, and by that, I mean, I will have a deja vu of a deja vu of a deja vu of a deja vu of a deja vu. Like, it goes that far down where I'm like, this has happened before. And in that happening before, I felt like it was happening before. But in that happening before, I felt like it was happening before. And in that happening before, I felt like that was happening before. So it like, it, it's layered. I've had quintuple deja vus. And it's like a really weird feeling. It's like when you stand in front of a mirror that's facing the right way and you see like an infinite line of you. That's what my deja vus are like. It's really weird and from the research I've done that's not normal so I don't know what that means but the strangest thing is that at the end of most of my deja vus I die I mean obviously I don't actually die but like in the deja vu I die and then it's that's what makes it stop and then I come back you know the feeling you get after a deja vu when you're like oh wait no it, when it goes away when you're like you stop feeling like this has happened before and you're like oh no never mind it didn't happen before that was a silly thought mm, moving on I don't know what that means I don't know if that if that's happened to any of you please tell me maybe that means something that I don't know please tell me what you think so another strange thing that I have been hesitant to talk about about me is I seem to have this power I'm like weird about calling it that but I mean for lack of a better description I mean that seems to be what it is I will give you multiple examples I've always had infinite like luck and I don't mean like in that stupid Lindsay Lohan movie lucky me where it stops raining the minute she gets out of the cab but it seems to be that I always get what I need when I need it you know it's not like everything's just been handed to me but I mean it just seems to be I I'm lucky like this one time for example I was playing the piano at the church in my hometown and I was in high school it wasn't my birthday or near my birthday or anything it wasn't near Christmas or anything like that I wasn't graduating like there was no event surrounding this. My parents made me pay for my own car. This one week I was exactly $50 short. It was like exactly to the penny $50 short. I didn't tell anybody. It's not like I went to school or church and was like, I'm $50 short. Ah. You know, I was just like quietly stressing about this to myself. I don't think I even told my parents about it. The next day I got a card in the mail from this older lady who went to my church. It was just a random card, like a just because card. I open it up. She says, this is just a card to let you know how much we appreciate you playing at the church and you know, what a good job you're doing and everything. And inside was a check for $50 right when I needed it, exactly what I needed, without me telling anybody about it. Now, this thing with me it seems to have more of a negative history than a positive one. It seemed to always be related to if I had a really strong negative feeling towards someone or something. It didn't seem to affect people, 
so much as objects. I worked at this restaurant where I had this co-worker lady who wasn't very nice to me. She always gave me a hard time. Constantly just on my case, just my case, for whatever reason, she's had it in for me. I don't know what. We'll call her Betty. So I was really mad one day and I went outside to t sit in my car and have my little 15 minute break or whatever. And she rode a bicycle to work. So I saw her bicycle sitting and I was just glaring at it because I was so mad because right before I came on break she like freshly yelled at me for something. So I'm sitting there on the break just channeling all this like rage and stuff just glaring at her bicycle and just like so mad. So I came into work the next day and she wasn't there and I was like oh good she's not working today or whatever. But I also thought it was weird because she worked every day. So one of my coworkers came up to me and he was like hey did you hear about what happened to Betty? And I was like no what happened to her? And he said, yeah, last night she was riding her bike home from work, you know, as she always does. And a van apparently like sideswiped her and like knocked her bike over. And she like went rolling down this hill and got in this bicycle accident and she was in the hospital. I was kind of mortified. As much as I didn't like her, I didn't want to hurt her. You know what I mean? I was just like angry. Hearing that and knowing that I had uh, glared at her bicycle for 15 straight minutes before she went home that day uh, made me feel really weird. I mean she was fine, she's had like a couple of broken bones and she was kind of banged up, but I thought that was really eerie and it kind of creeped me out. And this was not the only time this happened. This happened again. Several months later I had a bit of a, I don't want to call it a rivalry so much as this girl was just really mean and also just out to get me, but it wasn't specific to me. She was just a horrible person. She's probably still a horrible person, but whatever. We will call her Sally. So Sally had been teasing me and pulling mean pranks on me and like muttering mean things under her breath as she walked past me in the hallway, starting rumors about me. And she actually stole from me as well. She stole my entire CD collection at one point and she never gave them back. So I really did not like her. So I'm walking through the parking lot on my way out of school uh, to go into my car and I saw her car over there. So I did the little like stare glare channel negative energy thing to it. You know, it wasn't like a straight pure hatred of fifth for 15 minutes thing like it was with Betty, but I definitely shot some steam in the, in the direction of her vehicle. Sure enough, the next morning on the way to school, she got no car accident. It was a minor car accident. It was just like a fender bender. Like she wasn't hurt. The car was barely even hurt and she still was able to come to school and everything. But she was late and delayed, you know, because of like the police report or whatever. I kind of thought that was officially, officially I was convinced that there was something going on there. I've also closed businesses that I didn't like. Let me be very clear that these weren't intentional things. It's just I've been living life and sometimes I'll just really not like something a lot for some reason. It's usually some kind of personal reason. I always try to rein in my negative thoughts and my negative energy because I'm afraid of doing that again because it's just too much to be coincidental. Make of that what you will. And along those same lines, as far as like some kind of psychic connection goes, I also have a history with premonitions. And I don't mean like big ones where I can like make a phone call to someone and tell them, oh, stay inside today because I had a vision that you know you're gonna die in a plane crash or something. It's nothing like that. There is a major one um, that happened to me. I saved my own life. A premonition saved my life, but I will tell that one at the very end because that is the most impressive story ever. I still don't understand that. So my history with premonitions, one time I was like eight years old, I was sleeping and I was like on the tail end of sleeping, like I was about to wake up for the day. I had a dream right at the tail end that the phone rang and I answered it and it was my friend, we'll call her Gwen. It's not like, oh, Gwen called me all the time. It was like I had a bunch of friends back then and it could have been any one of them. It could have been my dad. It could have been somebody from my mom. You know, it was before caller ID, back when you didn't actually know who it was gonna be when you picked up the phone. It could have been any of like 15 people. It just happened to be my friend Gwen. So I woke up from that dream. I wanna be clear about pointing out that the phone was not ringing when I woke up. So it's not like it was ringing and I incorporated it into my dream, you know, because I heard it subconsciously. It wasn't that. I woke up, the phone was not ringing, but I was awake for like another minute or two, and then the phone rang. Guess who it was? It was Gwen. So that in and of itself isn't a huge deal, but stuff like that happened to me a lot. 
One in particular was very interesting and it was bigger than that. Really kind of freaked me out. I was 10 years old, I know, because I was in fifth grade, because I know exactly the classroom I was in, I know who the teacher was. So I was going to bed for the night. I wasn't asleep yet though, but I was laying there and you know how your mind just wanders before you go to sleep. And whether I was asleep or not is completely irrelevant because either way, this played out in my head. I was sitting in class, I was thinking about, I was sitting in class and it was during the day, it was during a school day and I was sitting in the classroom and I was next to some girl, we'll call her Heather, and then there was a boy there who sat near us, we will call him Michael. So in this little daydream or dream, whatever it was, Heather and I were discussing something specific. I wish I could remember what it was, but this was a quarter of a century ago and I don't remember it verbatim. But we were actually discussing something specific and it wasn't just like, oh, this test is gonna be hard. Like we're actually having conversation or something. And I remember specifically it was at the end of the day. It was the end of the school day. It was like during the last 20 minutes of class or something. And then the boy, Michael, turned around and joined in our conversation. And this I remember specifically. He asked us if we had started our periods yet. It was a random, weird random thing to ask. I don't know why this was going on in my brain, but that's what he turned around and asked. And we were both kind of like mortified and we were like, what? And he said something else specific in response. Heather said something specific in response. I said something. So it was like a whole minute and a half conversation that played out in my mind, specifically in detail in my mind. And I thought it was weird, but I didn't think anything of it. I went to school the next day. You guessed it. About 20 minutes left till the end of class. Heather says the exact same thing that she said in my vision. Michael turns around and says, have you girls started your period yet? He asked the exact same question. It was no joke, the exact same conversation word for word that I had envisioned the night before. And I thought that was so weird and I didn't understand why in the world I would <laughs> have had a vision like that because I thought the conversation was weird enough the first time I lived through it in my head. I'm like, that's a weird thing. But then it actually happened the next day. And it was, it's like a random thing. It's not like it saved anyone's life. It was completely inconsequential, but it, it happened. It's like I either blipped forward and saw it or just, I just, something happened and it connected and I knew it was gonna happen. I have no idea this story has nothing to do with my connection to the psychic world, but it is equally eerie and certainly unexplained. So I grew up in Ohio, for those of you who don't know. I was in 10th grade. There was a science club trip to Chicago. I had never been to Chicago in my entire life. Just a bunch of high school kids, there are probably like 30 of us or something, so we're all in Chicago and they pretty much just like let us do whatever we wanted to do. I remember I went, see now I don't know where these places were, I was like 14 or 15 years old, but I do know that they took us to this big mall or something and they were like, you know, go shopping for a couple hours, meet back here. At the time I was a huge fan of the author John Saul. I discovered his books like a couple years prior totally obsessed and I knew that there was a new book of his coming out soon. I just didn't know when because this was like pre-Google it days. So I was walking through the mall and I saw a bookstore and I got excited and I was like, oh yay, bookstore. I'm going to stop in and see if John Saul's new novel is out. I walk into this bookstore with every intention on asking if John Saul's new novel has come out yet. And there's a lady right there at the front desk. Upon seeing me walk in, she like lights up and she goes, Oh, back again already. And I was like, what? Obviously she's mistaking me for someone else here, but you know, okay. And I was like, no, I've actually never been here before. And and she get, she like looked actually puzzled. She didn't like go, oh, you know, I'm sorry. I must be mistaking you for somebody else. How can I help you? Like it didn't go that way. She like made this face. And then she said, yeah, you were in here yesterday. I said, no, I wasn't. I said, I'm on a class trip and we weren't here yesterday. And she's like, yeah, you came in yesterday. She like was like arguing with me. So that's the weird thing. The fact that she didn't just like let it drop and just be like, oh, this must be a misunderstanding or whatever. Maybe she thought I was messing with her. I don't know, because I was a teenager, but she goes, no, you came in yesterday to ask about John Saul's new book. And that's when I kind of 
had a little teenage heart attack. And I was like, okay, that's weird because that is what I came in to ask about, but I wasn't here yesterday. I've never been here before. And I made it clear to her that I'd never even been to Chicago before. I said, I live in Ohio. I've never been here before. I've never been to the bookstore before. I don't know who you are, but yes, that is what I'm here to ask about. She looked so shocked, but I don't know. She probably, again, might maybe thought I was messing her with her, but I certainly was not. And it never once crossed my mind that she was messing with me because she was very sincerely like confused and like, you know, befuddled by this. So she kind of was just sort of like, no, this book's not out yet. Thanks for coming in. So I left and I was like, all right, I don't know what that was. So I don't know if this is like one of those parallel dimension shifts to where like the days got crossed and I actually did come in twice in her version of things, or if it was like a doppelganger situation, I have no idea. And now for the weirdest, most unexplained thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And had this not happened, I probably would not be here today to tell you about it. This was in 2003. I was living in Columbus, Ohio at the time. And in this particular scenario, I was driving my car, which was a 96 Dodge Neon with my boyfriend at the time. And we were driving on the interstate. And if you know anything about Columbus, Interstate 71 is three lanes. In the middle, there's this giant wall median between the north and southbound sides. And I was in the furthest left lane, which is is the fast lane, of course. So it was right by the, the median wall. So I was going about 80, I think. I was going about 80 miles per hour. Now, before this story, a couple of weeks prior, my boyfriend had been driving my car and gotten into a little bit of a fender bender and rear-ended somebody and the hood had buckled in the front. It caused the latch, the hood latch to be loose, which I actually didn't know and he didn't know it either, but apparently the hood latch was loose. Okay, so back to this. Driving on the freeway, 80 miles per hour in the farthest lane of the three lanes next to the median wall. I'm just driving and all of a sudden I had this random vision of the hood giving away and smashing up against the windshield of my car. And in the vision, there was enough of a crescent shaped gap between like where the hood should have been and where the, you know, the curve of the hood to fit the body of the car is. So there's like this much looking space. And in the vision, I could see that there was, I could see through it to keep driving because the hood was completely obfuscating the entire windshield. It was just like up against it flat, but there was a little bit of a crescent space where I could still see through to drive and safely pull off. Now, bear in mind, I am actively driving 80 miles per hour on the freeway when I had this vision and it happened in a microsecond. It just happened. I barely even had time to process what I had just seen before it actually happened. Two seconds later, the hood flies up, smashes into the windshield, is flat against the windshield, shards of glass are falling out. My boyfriend's over here freaking out because it startled the hell out of him because it made a hell of a noise and it just hit so fast and so hard. So he's over here screaming obscenities and just like freaking out and I, didn't even blink because I knew it was gonna happen. I just calmly dipped my head down like I saw in the vision and looked through that little crescent area and safely pulled off. And he was like, how the hell did you not freak out? How did you, you didn't even jump? Like what, how? I couldn't wrap it around how I'd been so calm and how I didn't even seem to like startle or react to it whatsoever. And I was like, okay, time to sound crazy, but I saw it before it happened. It saved my life, I guarantee it. If I would have reacted how I'd normally react, because I startle really easily, and if I would have reacted how he was reacting, I would have lost control of the car and probably, like I couldn't have seen anything, and I would have probably smashed into either the wall or other cars, or the car would have lost, and I was going so fast too, that's the thing. This was like a horrific situation to be in. And the fact that I had this little microsecond vision just like a second or two before it actually happened prepared me to know what to do. And it's like I was expecting it. It's not like I was like, what the hell was that? It's like along with seeing the vision, 
I had the feeling that I knew this was coming. There wasn't a voice or anything. It's just like I knew that I was being shown what was about to happen. So I was like ready for it, you know, and I knew exactly what to do because the vision showed me what to do. I don't know what that was. I don't know. I guess it was a premonition or did I jump forward in time or was there like a dimension shift where there is some parallel dimension where I actually did die, but this one I lived on because like I skipped and like saw, you know, you know what I mean? So there's so many different theories that one one could draw from this depending on what your beliefs are and what you think either way I'm convinced that there is something else going on with our relationship to the universe just because of these things that I've lived through and I've experienced myself. Those are my unexplained stories. Please let me know in the comments what you think about them. Uh, I'd love to hear you guys' theories. If you guys have any similar stories, please tell me. I would love to hear your guys' unexplained stories or even paranormal stories, whatever. I would love to know if you guys have any similar stories because this stuff is so fascinating to me. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.